you know, I, I think you're selling your readers short. I think your life is, you and your life would be of great interest. And, and I think many people, and, and particularly if you, given your um, mastery of, of the writing craft and the, you know, interesting style, I think that you uh, bring uh, to your prose, I, I, you know, I think it would be, you know, I'm not, I don't have a dog in this fight. You can write or not write. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to persuade you of anything, but, but I do think uh, that if you were to produce such a work, uh, it would be of lasting value and it would be appreciated. Yes, you would be seen as a black man. I mean, that's not insignificant to who no, you no. actually are. I mean, given that you said you, you talk about my people, you say what we do is important. You're defending the idea of doing it. And I, I want to come back to that later because I had this interesting conversation with Shelby Steele and Robert Woodson and Camille Foster that I want to talk to you about. But, but yeah, uh, this uh, typical reader that you envision who might be drawn to your book and who will be drawn to mine uh, will come with this curiosity driven through the filter of seeing you in that particular role as a African, controversial African-American intellectual mm-hmm. and not seeing your, you know, I mean, I, I like that tour. I like that tour of your interior there uh, in your office <laughs> or whatever it is. I, I, I carried the laptop around. Yeah. I'm not at all surprised to learn that you're a cosmopolitan individual of a kind of sophisticated, uh, refined but sensibility. I know all... that's not what you were trying to say. I know you weren't bragging. No. You no, were just saying this is you. And and I agree. I mean, I feel that way all the time, man, because if, if I may, just for a moment, you know, I've lectured at the London School of Economics. I've lectured at the Delhi School of Economics. I've been, I've been lectured in Korea and, you know, in the... Ghana and South Africa and, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'm a, I, I mean, if I say it, it'll sound so self-aggrandizement, but I'm a lot more than a black conservative writing at Substack and disagreeing with uh, Michael Eric Dyson or some of these dudes. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, way, way, way more. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and that's why, and I know you share this with me. I take umbrage at the lionization of lightweight, empty-suited, empty-headed motherfuckers like Ibram X. Kid. (laughs) (laughs) Who couldn't carry my book bag. Who hasn't hasn't read... No, no, I'm sorry. He hasn't read a fucking thing. (laughs) If you ask him what Nietzsche said, he would have no idea. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's an unserious, superficial, empty suited, lightweight. He's not our equal, not even close. <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I can't join you. <laughs> <laughs> You made me do it, John. You made me do it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I will say this. Glenn, it's going to happen to you, and it would happen to me. We would write a memoir. You're going to write a memoir. And you're going to go to something called a bookstore if it still exists. <laughs> and you know where they're going to put it? They're going to put it in African-American issues. Black <laughs> As if that's all that you are. I've seen some of my books put in the black section that weren't even about race, just because my name is mine. And that's that's the way it would be. And even, you know, on websites, black books. And that's where they're going. That's where they're going to put you. And that's where they would put me, you know, as if that that sums up our entire existence. And maybe I'm making too much of that. I think you are. I, I'm I'm yeah. feeling liberated, man. I mean, that little rant that I just went on, I, <laughs> I apologize to those who were offended by my dismissive reaction of the great Ibram X. Kid. I apologize. I did not I did not mean to offend you. I got carried away. But but I really like where we are, Glenn, actually. I, I, I feel like not. we're gonna win, John. I think we're gonna win. I think history more. is on our side, really. I mean, I, I think I think this is such a bad equilibrium. That's how economists think. Okay. It's we're in a box here, socially, mm-hmm. intellectually, 
in terms of the political public reflection, the large conversation about the issue that we care about so deeply, which is race. But it's not only race. It's not only race. I mean, we're, you know, kind of free speech, intellectual integrity, honesty in the public discourse and stuff like that. And don't patronize. I mean, you and I both have the same thing. I mean, don't don't patronize me. This is what you're saying right now. Don't put me in the black book section when I'm not just a black book. Don't patronize me. I mean, I think we're going to win that argument. They're so far off. I mean, they're, you know, again, empty suits get paraded around as if they're real, you know, it's called paper mache. It's the emperor who has no clothes. I agree. You know, and we could go down the list of things. This affirmative action case, uh, this is going to come to a head now because the court is going to hear oral argument, I think, on Monday. Uh, just a couple of days from now, and then there, there's going to be a decision handed down at the end of the term in the, uh, May or June next year. Mm-hmm. This is fundamental. Yeah. I mean, you, you can remember how the Baki case and the, you know, and all of that, and then the the, uh, the challenges to affirmative action that came up to the Supreme Court in the early aughts. Uh, it, it's like, we're going to finally work this out. The court is very conservative, and they're going to do something special very significant in terms of the jurisprudential foundation of uh, racial discrimination by public agents and interpretation of civil rights of 1964, which may extend to to private. Uh, You know, anyway, it's coming to a head. There's an election coming. I I don't know if you want to talk about the election. Uh, I'm not a prognosticator, but it seemed pretty obvious that the wind is blowing. it, at the Republicans' back, and it's going to be a kind of sweeping thing. The the Biden administration, the the whole that that 2020 election, and you know now the aftermath of that, uh, I, you know, and it's so partisan, it's so intense. And I know we disagree about a lot of the politics, but I'm just saying I think we are winning in terms of the intellectual uh, arguments that we're having over the race question, and and I feel optimistic about. It. I agree. I think um, you have to sometimes know what era you're in. And, um, you know, people talk about, well, the golden age of television was the 50s. No, the golden age of television is right now. We're living through it in terms of television having a 200 year history. This this is it. In the same way, you look back and you notice that the golden age of classic black conservatism was the 90s. I doubt if any of you were thinking about that then, but if you look back and you see that it kind of hit the skids around 2003 with the affirmative action decision then, which unfortunately was right around when I was starting. I noticed all of a sudden in 2003, all anybody wanted to talk about was whether hip hop is good or bad. The reason that was the big thing until Katrina and Obama is because there was nothing left to talk about. And so now this is the golden age of black quote unquote heterodoxy. And I think it started partly because of technology, such as what we're using right now, partly because of chance confluence of people, such as finally there being a kid who does this. Coleman is is part of it. Finally, somebody who's, you know, in their 20s who adopts this line and isn't afraid. And so you can't say that it's just a bunch of, you know, older people. And then also um, it's the racial reckoning in early 2020 where so much foolishness was being put forth, that there was something that we needed to push back against. And I think that it's at the point, based on everything that you just said, I think that there is definitely um, the emperor has no clothes out there. I can see that looking at how things were three years ago versus how things are now. And I think that um, the only issue at this point is not whether or not a critical mass of people understand where we're coming from, but whether they have the bravery to act on it, I think we still have to wait to see a little bit more of the Spartacus. That's the issue. It's clear what people think. It's just whether they're going to act on it, whether academia specifically is just lost, but then thinking about the rest of the world, you know, most of the world is not academia. But yeah, there's, there's been a major pushback. We've been part of it. I do not feel like we're losing. I don't think we have a small coterie of fanatics behind us. I think that we're, we're hitting a middle ground. Yeah. I feel good about that at this point. 